All organisations falling within the scope of the Blue Card system are required to develop and implement child and youth risk management strategies which address eight minimum requirements. This video will guide you through the fourth of the minimum requirements, which is the requirement to have policies and procedures for handling disclosures or suspicions of harm, including reporting guidelines. So what is a disclosure of harm? What is a suspicion of harm? Well, a disclosure of harm occurs when someone, including a child, tells you that harm has happened, is happening, or is likely to happen to a child. A suspicion of harm is when someone has a reasonable suspicion that the child has suffered, is suffering, or is at unacceptable risk of suffering significant harm. This includes circumstances which relate to an unborn child which may be in need of protection after he or she is born. A child who has been or may be experiencing abuse may show behavioural, emotional or physical signs of stress and abuse. There may also be other circumstances where there is concern for a child's welfare but it does not reach the threshold to be considered a reasonable suspicion of harm. We will take you through how to address all these types of circumstances in the latter part of this video. Why do you need to have these policies and procedures? Children and young people can only be protected from harm if it is reported and dealt with quickly and effectively. Therefore, your organisation must have policies and procedures in place to ensure staff and volunteers respond as quickly as possible to a disclosure or suspicion of harm. A lack of formal policies and procedures can impede the reporting of such matters. So, how should you go about drafting the content for this requirement? When developing a policy in relation to handling disclosures or suspicions of harm, you should include information about defining harm, identifying harm, managing and recording a disclosure or suspicion of harm, reporting a disclosure or suspicion of harm, and reviewing policies and procedures following an incident. First, we will look at defining and then identifying harm. Harm is defined as any detrimental effect of a significant nature on the child's physical, psychological or emotional well-being. Harm may arise from the following types of abusive behaviours. Physical abuse. Emotional or psychological abuse. Neglect. and sexual abuse or exploitation. It is also important to remember that harm can be caused by a single act or omission or a series of acts or omissions. Your organisation should also include information about the signs to help identify if harm is occurring, what constitutes a disclosure of harm, and what constitutes a suspicion of harm. The toolkit, which is available on the Risk Management page of the Blue Card Services website, provides useful materials including a list of indicators of child abuse which will assist you further. Let's now look at managing and recording a disclosure or suspicion of harm. Your organisation should document how staff and volunteers should receive a disclosure of harm from a child or young person or manage a suspicion of harm. When receiving a disclosure of harm, you may advise your staff that they should remain calm and listen attentively, actively and non-judgmentally, Ensure there is a private place to talk. Encourage the child to talk in their own words and ensure that only open-ended questions are asked to act protectively. 
ensure that the child is advised that the disclosure cannot remain a secret and that it is necessary to tell someone in order to get help. Document the disclosure clearly and accurately. Not attempt to mediate an outcome and follow the appropriate process in relation to reporting a disclosure of harm. It is helpful to provide a template to assist staff in recording a disclosure or suspicion of harm. When managing a suspicion of harm or other concern for a child's welfare, you may advise your staff and volunteers that they should remain alert to any warning signs or indicators, pay close attention to changes in the child's behaviour, ideas, feelings and the words they use, make written notes of observations, assure a child that they can come to talk whenever they need to and listen to them and believe them when they do, follow any relevant process for reporting a suspicion of harm to child safety or the police, or consider what support services could be offered to the family if the concern does not meet the relevant threshold to make a report. The toolkit, which is available on the Blue Card Services website, provides further detailed information in relation to how to manage a disclosure or suspicion of harm. Your organisation should also document clear policies in relation to reporting a disclosure or suspicion of harm. Your risk management strategy should outline reporting requirements for all staff and volunteers. Everyone has a responsibility regarding child protection and your policy should be clear about the circumstances in which a report should be made to the police, for example, where a child is at imminent risk of harm or a child has been the victim of a criminal offence. You should also ensure that you outline any applicable legislative obligations to report matters to police which apply to individuals working in your organisation. You should also outline when a report should be made to child safety in relation to a reasonable suspicion that a child may be in need of protection. You should ensure that you specifically outline any mandatory reporting obligations which apply to individuals working within your organisation. People with mandatory reporting obligations include doctors, registered nurses, approved teachers employed at a school, and police officers with child protection responsibilities. These individuals must report to child safety a reasonable suspicion that a child has suffered, is suffering, or is at unacceptable risk of suffering significant harm caused by physical or sexual abuse and does not have a parent able and willing to protect the child from harm. Another aspect which you should cover in your policies and procedures should be when a non-mandatory reporter should report a reasonable suspicion that a child has suffered, is suffering, or is at unacceptable risk of suffering significant harm and does not have a parent able and willing to protect the child from the harm. Remember, a reasonable suspicion may be based on either a disclosure of harm or observing other signs of abuse. You should also ensure that you outline timeframes and relevant contact details for reporting a disclosure or suspicion of harm and ensure that there is a clear process for reporting within your organisation, particularly where a disclosure is made concerning a person within your organisation. You must also be sure to outline how to deal with concerns for a child that do not amount to a reasonable suspicion of harm by considering what support services could be offered to the family. For example, a Family and Child Connect service can provide information and advice about connecting families with support services and the circumstances in which a referral can and should be made to one of these services. You should also ensure appropriate confidentiality is maintained in relation to the issues and any relevant documents. Also ensure that you consider any appropriate support or counselling which can be offered to the child or young person. And identify what supports are available for the person to whom the disclosure was made. Lastly, let's look at reviewing current policies and procedures. 
you should undertake a review of the operation of your policies and procedures following a disclosure or suspicion of harm being actioned to consider the application of the policies and whether there are any necessary changes and identify any additional training requirements. To further assist you in developing and implementing effective child and youth risk management strategies, a toolkit which is available on the risk management page of the Blue Card Services website has been developed to provide information and guidance on the eight minimum requirements. Remember, safe service environments don't just happen, they require ongoing planning, commitment and maintenance. Thank you for taking the time to learn about this requirement of child and youth risk management strategies. We hope you found this video useful and we encourage you to watch the remaining videos on offer from the Blue Card Services Learning Portal.